Hello and welcome back to sharing a chapter a day. This is Do, Ra, Me, and today I will be reading chapter 91 of Engagement in Peril by Dara Ado Sok. Chapter 91 is titled Shinshin and the Romeros. Thank you for listening. Now, just like I just like how I was accepted by the Long family and shared in many events with them, Shinshin was greatly appreciated and accepted by the Romero family, of whom are all wonderful people. Their parents had migrated from El Salvador and had made a life for themselves. They have three lovely wonderful children, Blanca, Douglas, and Dilma, all are now married and have kids. Douglas has a baby boy, Adrian, and Blanca has a bouncing baby boy, Christopher Andrew this past January. Shinshin had gotten to know the entire Romero family through Blanca and Dilma, who were in his heart and were all one of his best friends. Like Shinshin, Blanca and I have worked together in various aspects for the Long Beach Unified School District. Blanca and I were once college, college aides together for Mr. Clark's class at Polytechnic High School in the ESL program. We taught, we helped with translating for science, health, and driver education class. We worked together in the classroom for about a year and a half then. While we were our separate ways, while we went our separate ways in life and education, we met up again when we were doing the CEDE testing where we often ran into each other throughout many lives through many throughout many schools in Long Beach. Shinjin was also the long term substitute teacher for the classroom that Blanc was at as instructional aide at back at Tinger Preparatory Academy on the east side of town of East Anderton and Studebaker Road. From then on, Blanca and Shinshin began to talk more and more and help each other in various things, mainly looking for work at various schools and testing sites. Blanca also introduced Shinshin to, to the position of being the test proctor at the local Domingos, Domingos Hill University where they helped pass out various test exams and monitor testers during the exams. They were paid according to the type of test given then, and the pay is usually several weeks late. While working at Domingos Hill, we and we gave and monitored various tests from the GWE, SAT, SAT1, SAT2, ELM, EPT, CSET, and CBES exam. Shinshin had once talked about what he did as a test proctor for Cal State Domingos Hill. Being a test proctor was pretty easy. You check in testers by verifying their identification pass out the test booklet and pencil, inspect calculators and other testing instruments, and then you give some instruction about the test and the time allotted, and then you monitor the tester during the examination time. Afterward, you organize and sort out the test booklets, exam booklet, and then you get paid several weeks down the road. This test proctor position was usually on one or two Saturdays of every month, mostly in the fall semester, and our tester ages range from 16 years old to senior citizens who were taking college courses. It was during one of this test proctor work Saturday that Shinshin was eventually invited to the Romero home to meet and greet their entire family. Blanca, Dilma, and Shinshin often carpool at, to work on these proctoring Saturdays. And during that time, Blanca was engaged to Eddie, who is now her husband, who had thought that Shinshin was a girlfriend of Blanca because Blanca's hadn't bothered to tell him that Shinshin was a guy friend and co-worker. And it wasn't until Shinshin answered her phone that Eddie realized that he was a male fellow. To keep Eddie's mind at ease about them often carpooling to work, Blanca decided to invite Shinshin to their home to meet the rest of the family, her parents and her fiancé, of course. From the first moment we all met, they took a liking to me, and I was often invited to their home on weekends for games and family gathering. With a nice smirk, Shinshin described how good the Romeros were for him, to and for him. During one of our nonchalant conversations while living together, from that point on, I often spent my weekends at the Romero home off of Rose Avenue and 14th Street, playing pool for friendly wages, various card games, high-low lotteria, just enjoying each other's company. They often had nice food and meals with alcohol and soda drinks, then as well for all of us to enjoy while we socialized throughout those evenings. It was here with the Romero that I often get drunk off a wine cooler. Let's see, I think I got alcohol poisoning then. My neck was swollen, my skin complex was quite red, my eyes were bloodshot, and my breathing was shallow. It took several long hours for me to regain my composure and relaxed demeanor. I often stayed at their home past 10 on these weekend gathering, 
and it was one of the most enjoyable time that I had Pat ever spent with people. I really miss the Romero com- Romero's company. So Shin Shin Shin. Besides meeting Blanca's parents and fiance, Shin Shin also had told me that he had made met their trios, their tios and their cousin primas, of which they had plenty of family to go around. They had family all over Southern California. From Los Angeles and Torrance to El Salvador, Shinchen often went on, went out on the went out with the Romero family gathering and outing. Then, the Romeros would, were are, tr- are tremendously good people for Shinchen. Then, it sucks that someone had to come in his life and ruin it for all of him. The Romero treated Shinchen like family to them, with them. Then, yes, that's right, Delilah. I'm talking about you, you bitch. You. If you hadn't come along, I'm sure my beloved Shinshin would still be around to this day, and he and I could get together. You selfish suck, you his bitch. Delilah, you bitch. Shinshin could still be happy with the Romero and sharing in their experience and friendship still. I can't understand why God made a person like you, you bitch, Delilah. While Shinshin was getting to know Blanca and her family, I on the other hand was getting to know Dilma, Blanca's younger sister. She was a summer. It was that summer during my first assignment as assistant team leader at Burnett Elementary, and I met Delma Romero, a lovely El Salvadorian girl who had the loveliest smile. Delma had long, light, highlighted brown curly hair then, and was quite f- qu- friendly to everyone. She was well put together with a nice fur behind. She and I are about the same height. From Shinshin's description of Delma, I knew that she could have been Blanca's younger sister. Shinshin often spoke well of Blanca. Dilma and their family during our nonchalant, our nonchalant, during our nonchalant conversation. Dilma and I got along well during our testing session at Burnett. After a few days there, I asked Dilma if she wanted to hang out, perhaps got go get something to eat after work, and she happily obliged to my offer. We planned to go. We planned it out ahead of time. Literally, I know that Dilma had a steady boyfriend whom she had been for, with for several years, and now is married to. Turns out that he's the one is currently married to. That Wednesday afternoon after work, Dilma left their pickup truck, left her pickup truck, parked off of Hill Street and Atlantic Avenue, while she and I boarded my Honda Civic. We headed towards Shaw Cove in Laguna, California, the very place that I often brought friends and people that I was attracted to for a visit, and to sightsee the nice ocean and beach view there. Once in my car, I took the Pacific Coast Highway south, all the way. Driving from Long Beach through Cherry Pine River Grove, Seal Beach, Sunset Beach, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, and to Laguna, where we stop and venture about the sandy beaches of Shaw Cove. The sight that afternoon was really nice. The cool breeze passed in and out of the cove, while Dilma and I walked down the concrete step toward the sandy beach below. The landscape of this very nice neighborhood and cove was covered with vines, flowers, and banana trees. The air was soothing and calm. We walked side by side down toward the sand that afternoon, making small talks and, and chit chat about this and that as we gazed into the pristine atmosphere before us. I was having a nice time with Dilma then. Once on the sand, we took off our shoes and walked up barefooted on the cool, wet, moist land, sand. Looking at Dilma then, she seemed so lovely against the early sun, sun, setting sunset. Looking at Dilma then, she seemed so lovely against the early setting sun. I was all smiled and thinking of what could have been and perhaps what may have happened. Like always, I looked. Why I took deep. Like always, why I looked deep into Delma. Thoughts of Shinshin and Ashley came about in my wandering mind. I really had missed him and her so much that I kept my mouth shut and returned my attention to my lovely friend Delma. She had her digital camera with her then, and we took poses together while the while the beach and sunset were behind us. We had a nice talk and walk about that nice, warm, breezy afternoon. After a good half hour or so, we decided to head back to Long Beach. But first, we decided to grab a bite to eat at a local tacos y mariscos. After sharing a nice hearty meal of fried fish, rice, beans, and salad, and some beverage, we headed back to Burnett, where I dropped her off and walked Delma to her truck and saw her off on her way home late that afternoon. She gave me a nice warm embrace and hug in appreciation and gratitude. I was quite shocked at first. I returned a warm embrace and was said our goodbyes, and we parted away for the evening. I had a nice afternoon with Dilma then, and fortunate for me, we didn't go any further than that. I have grown fond of Dilma since then, and I am happy for her that she has found true committed love. 
It wasn't until Shinchen told me that Dilma had a steady boyfriend that I realized that I shouldn't try to push the envelope with Dilma. She deserved to be happy, and I shouldn't interrupt in her life with my bottle-up sexual urges. From Shinchen's description of Dilma and her way of being really nice to people and strangers, she and I could have never been. Be. Dilma was the type of people that accepted all newcomer in her into her heart without realizing the future ramification or possible false outcome. She has always been a good and lovely heart. She always has a good and lovely heart all the same. And fiance is a very lucky guy to have her. Just like Eddie is very lucky to, to be married to Blanca. Shinshin honored and cherished the Romero. He took his love for the Romero to his grave with him. He always spoke fondly of them and cherished the loving good nature of him. I wish they were will remember him for his good and giving nature. I hope they can forgive him for suddenly leaving them without telling them what he was going through was getting himself into then with that cold hearted succubus Delilah. He was afraid to tell them that he had thought he had found true love, but then again he was selfish. Perhaps he was afraid to lose all of them all the same. Shinshin was trying to juggle love of friendship with love of the heart. But then Shinjin had grown fond of the Romeros and had become a good friend, friend of Blanca and Dilma. Shinjin had sh showed me picture of him and the Romero together at their homes and outing. Most of him and Dilma going to Fridays and weekend farmer market in downtown Long Beach and off of 22nd Street Harbor area and hanging out at various sites throughout the city. He saw Dilma as a, as a very good friend and he had met and gotten to know her fiancé as well. Shinjin even attended Blanca's wedding ceremony and reception during that Labor Day holiday in 2006, and he had a wonderful time then. He was he was welcomed by all and was visited, invited to sit at the primary family table then, and they treated him like family as well. From what I heard from Shinjin during our interaction and conversation, he often told me that Blanca's father often introduced Shinjin to his cousin and friends as his good friend, and they welcomed him with open arms. Shinshin had attended many outings with the Romero then, when he was deeply involved with that, them before that bitch Delilah took him away from all that. He once traveled to the city of Di Diamond Bar with the Romero to have a, a festive dinner together at, a, at once Eddie's good friend's house. Everyone seemed, everyone Shinshin went with the Romero, everywhere Shinshin went with the Romero, their friends and family were surprised to see him coming along. I guess they didn't expect a not Hispanic person who tag along with them for the ride. One time, Shinshin entertained a family dinner and danced with the Romero at Rio Grande in Montclair off of off a of Holt Boulevard. It was a nice outing. They all boarded Mr. Romero's dark green Toyos, Toyota Sequoia and rode with them all on the long on the hour long drive to Montclair. That night, Shinshin had a nice dinner buffet with the Romero. After Blanca, Delma, and their mother took to the dance floor with their loved ones. Shinshin was then left alone to sit by himself while he watched on. Blanca, being a good friend and with a warm heart, talked it out with Eddie and asked Shinshin to dance with her. Shinshin was shy of, shy of the matter and worried about what Eddie would think. Blanca reassured him that she does what she wanted and took up, and he took her up on the offer and danced with her for a song or two that enjoyable evening. Besides attending family dinner at the restaurant, Shinshin also went along with the Romero to the cousin's home in Los Angeles and Torrance area, where he was welcomed with gratitude and appreciation. Shinshin often had a blast with the Romero during their many outings together. After a while, Shinshin was introduced to Blanca's aunt and uncle, also their cousin, Olga, and several other. Shinshin's life was story was Shinshin's life story was quite intriguing to the Romero family and friend. They seemed to want to know more about him. Some of the older Romero can somewhat relate to Shinshin's past, they too had come from a war-torn country of El Salvador. Shinshin was even invited to watch Voice Innocentes or Innocent Voices movie then with them. It was a nice movie about the struggle of El Salvador during the 1980s El uh, Salvadoran Civil War. Main focus was about an 11-year-old boy. Once he reached the age of 12, he is obligated to join the military and how his mother struggled to get him away from the sort of life struggle. Shin Shin ha was happy to then to have such good, honest people and friends like the Romero. I often wish that horrible girl, Delilah, hadn't come into his life. I wish I could have turned back the hands of time and make it that and make it right. I wish I could have stopped her from ever being with Shin Shin. That bitch, Delilah. I hope she burns in hell. 
Here are some notes from Xin Xin's journal of his experience with the Romeros. It's because of Delilah that I haven't spoken to Blanca or Dilma these past year. Those are my favorite El Salvadoran girl, well, girls in general. I regret on I regret not letting go of Blanca. I regret uh I regret letting go of Blanca and her family. I'm so sorry for that, my dear friends. Hope we can catch up one day. I promise to tell you everything what that happened that I only hope you and your family were are well and healthy and I only hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me forgive a fool like me you know at Blanca's and Eddie's wedding I was the only guest that wore a tuxedo besides the groom and the groomsmen I was the only guy that wore a tuxedo guests were looking and staring and probably wondering why I was went to the extreme to wear a tuxedo at a wedding as a guest I wore my polished black tuxedo with matching lavender vest and tie you know what was other than that, wearing a tuxedo to a wedding when you, when you are a guest? I was the only Asian at the wedding. About 90% of the, our guests were Hispanic descent. What not, but we all had a lovely time and everyone's pleasant throughout the whole festive ceremony that day and night. The lovely wedding was held on, on Labor Day weekend during the beginning of, beginning day of September 2006. They actually walked and they, they actually walked and the actual walk and religious ceremony was held outside under the nice warm sh weather. It was held on the grassy grounds of the, hot of the Hotel Maya off of Queensway Drive near Queen Mary. There were four groomsmen and, and br four bridesmaids, where Blanca's brother and sister were the best man and maid of honor for her memorable day. Of course, her father walked her down the aisle while Eddie's mother gave him away. The ceremony and vows were both in English and Spanish for family, friends, and guests and witnesses. It was very nice. It was a very nice ceremony. I, being close to the family, was seated up in the front row of seat of seats besides the bride's parents. After exchanges of vows and promises, everyone then all entered the reception hall in the, in the Reeves Ballroom. I was also invited to sit at the family's table where all had a nice meal, and every minute, few minutes or so, we would tap our wedding glass with a butter knife and fork to get the bride and groom to kiss for the festive family and guests. While we all wine and dine, toasts and congratulations were spoken in microphone and music played throughout the festive hall. After the meal and drinking, the dancing came about. It was the bride and groom's first dance, the bride and her father, and the groom with his mother. Right after that, their first dance, we then involved ourselves in the certain money dance with their bride and groom as well. During the money dance, men lined up behind one another to dance with the bride, where he would pin cur currency bill on her dress and share a few moments with her during the dance. And then it goes the same for the groom, where mo women lined up to do the same as the men did the bride. It was a nice dance. I too found the courage and got into line to dance with my, my get my dance with my best friend Blanca, the new bride. That enjoyable festive evening. After a long day of wedding bliss and ceremony, after around midnight, I returned to the Romero's home with her parents, aunt and uncle, while Blanca and her husband Eddie and the groomsmen and bridesmaids stayed back at the Hotel Maya, where they all had rooms for the night or so. I hung out around Romero's home for several more hours, where we played lottery and some card games for monetary wages. It was all fun and games that night. After a while, I thanked the Romero and wished them good night, and I drove back to my apartment for the rest of the evening. The Romero are the people that I come to love and care for, and because of my love, lust for Delilah, Lila, that I cut all ties with them. I so much miss the days that I was always with their home on the weekend, playing high-low lottery, shooting the pools, and having a nice dinner with Blanca, Delma, and their entire family. I regret ever leaving them for the love that I thought I had for Delilah then. I am so very sorry, my lovely friend. I'm sorry, Romeros, for having betrayed you and having lost you because of Delilah. I spent lots of festive occasion and holiday with the Romero and because of Delilah, I gave up everything that I once had with them. I am so very sorry to the Romero. And if given a chance, I would apologize to them for my ignorant stupidity and regrettable ask for their forgiveness. Do I deserve it though? I sometimes question myself that. God bless the Romero for being such wonderful people, friends, and much comfort and sincerity to them. I have now come to realize that Delilah was no good for me. She was the very poison that, and kryptonite that has slowly weakened and destroyed me once my once vital self from within. I wish I knew then what I knew now. I wish I could have realized then that Delilah was the type of per girl that I was warned about while growing up with Detective Hampton and going through the basic with Dara. Perhaps I could have been able to save myself if I knew that she was eventually break my heart the way she did. I should have listened to those who have tried to warn me about 
her deceit and her falsehood during my work with the CED session. I was so goddamn stubborn that I wish I was so much in love with Delilah, so I had thought. I promised that I would do my best from now on to become a better person and perhaps be more cautious when falling in love. I just have to be a better person all around and in all aspects of my daily living. I need to become a better person so that someone I love would never do that to me again. I hope that the Lord would look out for me. I hope the Lord will answer my prayer. You see, Shinten still think that it was his fault that Delilah did him that way she did. He still blamed himself for her lies, cheats, and deception. I wish I could save him then. I wish I could save Shinshin. I really miss Shinshin Nagami. Shinshin. Shinshin Nagami. Shinshin Nagami's tale. Reflective collaboration. My hypocrisy knows no end. I've fallen weary to the unyielding, lustful grip of being a sodomite for as long as I could remember. I bite. It's what I do best and I've taken a big chunk out of my beloved Shinshin Nagami and beloved Shinshin's life. It's taken some time to work this out. I've been selfishly contemplating while struggling on how I go about explaining this piece to you. You, the general public. Thousands of P pages full of written document and record that have been left behind for me to find, sort through, and tell stories of. The following chapter will tell of Shinshin Nagami's trials and tribulation, who has been an infectious thorn on my side all these past many years. Shinshin hasn't been as careless and reckless or has been a bastard like myself. And although he tries many times to change the way he is, it seems that no one ever changed who they really are, no matter how hard or how much they have sacrificed to do so. People only find ways of covering up for who they really are and establish fictitious persona in faces of their associate. This piece will detail the relationship that Shinshin has been involved with with a contagious succubus who drained him of his youth and vitality, where his world was turned upside down by a bitch of a mother and her conniving whore daughter. Although Shin Shin recovered from his misfortune with that opposite sex, he bears the scars and scab that she left embedded all over his body, and the unfortunate situation has made him realize that, that life is sometimes filled with ill-hearted and untruthful, and untruthful people who will take advantage of an ignorant giving person like himself. Now, the 18 months relation that Shinshin had been involved with only gave him a few moments of pleasure and much heartache and headaches, which eventually led to his unfortunate, unresolved, comatose death these past months. The person that came with the, with the phrase, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree, well, was absolutely correct in uttering the statement. Shinshin has found that to be very true in his personal life because he was involved with a dishonest female who took after her evil-hearted mother. Shinshin's relationship with this deceiving female was complicated with lies and deception, where a sinful mother and an ignorant daughter took advantage of his God-giving, ever-giving heart and good nature. During their relation, Shinshin loved the contagious succubus absolutely, only, find that, only to find that he was being played and used after an 18-month-long devotion and commitment she was seeing one other or more while they were intimately and passionately involved. Personally, I feel that Shinshin had been the victim of an ugly, ugly hearted person. Shinshin had given up much for this contagious, ugly and unruly person financially and emotionally, shunning his extended family and good friends and their family, giving up on promotions and putting aside higher education to make it time for what he thought was true love. Although the relationship ta has taken the intimate involved couple on several trips locally and internationally and got the two to participate in various events and outing together where they have crossed the Atlantic and the Pacific and during the entire time there were signs of her deceits and lie and yet being a devoted pagan Christian, Shinshin was so gullible that he ignored what was being done to and was happening in front of him. He was ignorantly in love and like they say, love is blind and blind like an asshole Shinshin was, do was during the entire year and a half. He was much into this ugly hearted female and gave her all this, all his, and gave her his all and what he got in return wasn't nearly reciprocal. She has given him much heartache which was complicated with various mental, physical diseases and infections. Shinshin past lover is a walk, walking infestation of life and contagious STDs. Shinshin's past lover is a walking infestation of lies and contagious STDs, 
who has soiled Shinjin once healthy chiseled body where he's now riddled with boils and abscesses physically and emotionally. Readers will be given a cautionary tale and made aware of, of this inbreed succubus and her evil mother, the Lila and Lilith, and how Shinshin's life was turned upside down because of their lies, deceits, and although Shinshin has exterior beauty, and although Delilah has exterior beauty, we come to find that she's the owner of a conniving, cold, ugly, tainted black heart. This person personality portrayed that of a succubus feeding Shinshin's ego with lies and deception only to suck him dry of his giving heart. She used her cosmetic, fabricated Catholic attractiveness to sink her vicious fang into Shinshin's jugular and ignorant heart. Christian heart. Delilah, mental and conniving interior is the, that of wickedness, descending upon and having sexual intercourse with sleeping Shinshin, who was captured in a comatose state during their entire pretentious relationship. My relations, personal actions and transgression with the same girl and the few other involved were participant with their with the succubus may also have committed contributed to Shinshin's long unpreventable tragic sad demise. For this I can say for this I can be blamed for the richer side of one of my very own. For this I I never forgiven myself for, nor shall I ever ask for forgiveness or redemption for my brash, harsh action upon someone I had and still love dearly. It's true that the good they die young, and bastard like me live on and enjoy the pain of those good and ignorant. No living soul would be able to judge me. When the time comes, and by chance that I am re reunited with Shinshin in the afterlife, he'll be the only one to be my judge, my jury, and my executioner. Then again, Ignorant is bliss. Thank you for listening. This is the end of chapter 91. Be on the lookout for chapter 92 titled Shinshin's Body Found. This is Do, Ra, Me, and I'll see you later. Thank you.